All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Roma Press podcast. We hope you are doing well at the top. As always, thank you to all of our wonderful patrons. If you would like to join the patron group chat, uh, early access to episodes, patreon.com slash Roma Press, YouTube at IS Roma Press, like, subscribe, turn on that little bell thing so you can get the alert when we post the new episodes of the podcast. We greatly appreciate your support. Everyone, it means so, so much. Uh, I'm having trouble to find the words, Andy, because I, I I was in awe of Roma when they defeated Cagliari 4-0. to zero. Now, the cynical part of me, the glass half empty, the pessimist in me, during this stretch of Daniele De Rossi, it would be very easy to say, okay, well, the three of the worst teams in Serie A, Sersa calls me with his bald head and ball camp on the bench should be able to beat these guys. Let's not make a big deal of it. And I would say to you, the, uh, the more positive part of me would say, uh, where have you been? For the last 18 months, uh, because even when Roma were playing among the worst sides in Serie A, they were still having trouble closing them out. They were struggling. Although we have Sometimes to, even, I, although that point would be pretty uh, hard to make against uh, their performance against Cagliari because we won 4-1 to the last time out. We Well, uh True, but what about the first no, two no, matches of I'm the just season? I'm throwing it out there, you know. I'm just. I know, it. I know. L- listen, I, I understand. I, I understand that ha- trying to have balance, okay, in moments like this, it's always difficult because there's always hyperbole on one end or the other, okay. You know, uh, uh, people tweeting at me, uh, the, the the Jose Mourinho stands. I, I went from apparently kissing his uh, backside too much to now I am too critical of him, and I. Uh, somebody said I am not appreciative of all that he has done for Roma. It's, uh, again, hyperbole on both sides of this thing. However, I, I cannot understand enough the shock and awe I had on my face for the full match of Roma Cagliari. Um, first of which began with an early goal, uh, and then a second, less than 20 minutes later, and then seeing a Roma close out the match early, manage a result early, and then on top of it, my new hero, Angelino, put in more successful crosses tonight in the span of 25 minutes, in less than half of an hour, it seemed like he put in more successful crosses from the left flank than Leo Spinazzola did uh, since that collapse transfer to Inter. That, that's how long, I, I, I mean, I am hard-pressed to think of the last time I saw so many good crosses from the left side. Now, naturally, um, there were fears that uh, he did sustain sustain an injury, but Roma uh, reassured uh, reassured us very quickly that it was nothing serious. Uh, So that's good news. But like, it was one of those things, kind of like how I imagine uh, my my nona was when she first uh, figured out how to use a computer, you know, just like a streak slowly rolling down the face because you never knew this day would come. That is how I felt watching Angelino deliver multiple successful crosses into the area in the same same match, same half of an hour, same half of an hour. I, I, I don't know where to begin. I, I do not know where to begin. Do we want to begin with just the overall play? How well, Roma clearly have... begin with the guy who has the number sixty nine on his shirt. That's so. Don't uh, don't come on here and, and any time we have to but... speak of sixty nine. I, I mean, I, I, he was superb. Yeah, I, I mean, I know it's Cagliari, okay, and, and I know we're all every, everybody's going to be hesitant to give any sort of credit. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Okay, you can feast next week, perhaps, if you're so miserable at a time like this. You can feast next week when Inter come to town, okay? But now, we're, we're going to enjoy this. I, I mean, Andy, I, I like, I, 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 I'm watching Angelino on the left successfully cross the ball in the air, on the ground. I, 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 I don't even know how to interpret it beyond, again, just like a slow trickle of tears running down my face in absolute awe at the situation i i 
what am I supposed to say? I suppose the thing that jumped out to me the most of tonight between Roma and Cagliari, the overall application and effort of Roma. I don't know about you, but I said this in my post-match reaction podcast for the patrons. Um, Rick Karsdorp looked like he was playing calcetto with his friends. I mean, the guy has not run that much since when? I I, I don't know. Maybe when he was doing his, um, uh, when Atalanta, maybe when he was d- doing the uh, a medical with Bangs Bowl or something. Maybe that's the last time he ran that much. I, I cannot tell you the last time the guy gave that level of effort. I was stunned. Um, we can even talk of Paulo Dybala, who you rightfully pointed out. I don't know if it was the last match or the first one against Verona, where the guy just looked woefully out of place. Today, he looks like a completely different. Uh, it looks like a completely different player, far more involved, getting the ball in dangerous positions. He's making these smart runs from the right side. We can talk about the midfield. Oh, my God. Gosh, a mid a mid a mid field with a connection with the attack. I could have cried. I I, I could have cried. Andy, I I I don't care if it's Cagliari. That was among the most complete performances of Roma. I, I mean, definitely, obviously of this season. But I'm even hard pressed to think of even from last season. And 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 I am not meeting simply because it was a victory. I'm saying from minute one. To minute 90, this was all Roma. All Roma. From beginning to end, they scored early. They managed the result. And at no point were they under serious threat. I truly don't know what more you could ask for when we're sitting here, uh, you know, one year ago, we're, we're, you know, we're sweating against matches against Cremonese. We're, we're uh, watching Roma have to uh, barely win games 1-0. to I, I mean, this was superb. Superb. And I don't care if it was only Cagliari. I don't care. Well, yes, of course. So it's all things must be taken into consideration. So you must consider the moment that we were coming into, you know, the moment that we were coming off of. Um, so we were coming off a really tough stretch with with Jose Mourinho being dismissed, with the results not being there. And we were heading into a, a period where, the games, yes, are feasible and you should be winning them. But at the same time, that adds pressure to the situation. If you are a team like Roma who is unsure of itself, who is coming off a, a, a stretch of much uncertainty, much speculation, much criticism, that is always difficult. Uh, this particular version of Roma I doubted whether they had it in them to even pull out, yes, nine points out of these last three games against the likes of Elas Verona, Salernitana, and Cagliari. So three teams that are fighting to avoid relegation. Um, So there is that. There is that consideration to be made that you have a new manager. There is that consideration to be made that mm, these are the games where you are required to ha- to collect all points. So what we did was the bare minimum. The nine points are the bare minimum. But again, yes. that expectation for Roma at that moment in time, say two weeks ago even, was a pretty high bar. And it, it sucks to say, but that's the truth. It was a pretty high bar. Um, so there's part of me that should take it slowly and should take it with a, of a bit of a, okay, well, you know what? It's good, but let's move on. On the other hand, it, I find it so encouraging mm, to see a, a, a team that, first of all, clearly thrives off of uh, the Stadio Olimpico. It's undeniable, you know, how how that changes everything because I really doubt whether in a moment like this they could have pulled this off, this kind of performance, this h- kind of high-caliber, high-intensity game, even against this opponent uh, while playing away. We saw that against Salernitana. It was just not there, even in terms of ideas. They liked, lacked ideas tonight. They just attacked the opponent differently. Then you obviously can make considerations with individuals. So Angelino, as you said, within those first 45 minutes, 
he probably has more successful crosses than Zaleski and Spinazzola combined within the last two years. Um, Paolo yes. Dybala, who all of a sudden perhaps feels the pressure uh, from having Baldanzi just waiting to pounce on his minutes. Um, that's huge. If that is a wake-up call for somebody like Dybala, if that is a player who needs somebody to threaten his position because his position... Uh, at the club, in the team, in the lineup, hasn't been questioned since he arrived. Now there is a player who theoretically could be his replica. That's awesome to see. It's awesome to see Brian Cristante, again, playing dynamic, playing quick football, super encouraging. You have, as you said, Rick Karsdorp, regenerated, rejuvenated. Um, Romelu Lukaku looked more involved. Uh, Paredes at the center of play. So obviously this is a game where almost everything went your way. And this is by no means the, 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 you know, the blueprint of what's to come. I hope it is, but I doubt it. But for now, this was, this was a huge game, a huge blessing to have three consecutive wins. When was the last time this happened? To this particular, I said team. that in my post match. Don't Google it. Don't go. You'll be clicking far more than you like. Tell me. It's been. Don't a, tell me. Go uh, ahead. Well, it wasn't <laughs> this year. Can you take a guess? Do, will, do you know what it was? Uh, probably uh, September or October. Probably late September, October, early October. Could be the the Roma Press research team is on it, but I would have to venture that that is you, the case. You, no, you you are correct. You are correct okay, because we if we wanted to count uh, all competitions, yeah, yeah, including um, the Europa yes, League, it was October. It was okay. uh, Roma. They defeated uh, Frosinone, right. Servet, and then Cagliari. Okay, and, and when was the last time we had three consecutive wins in Serie? A? Uh, that uh, uh, it was Roma over Frosinone. Roma over Cagliari. Roma defeat Monza. We know the late okay. goal of El Shirawi. Okay. And then they lose 1-0 to zero against Inter. Yeah. Oh. Right f- after that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say history repeating itself, but uh, it, it is at least lining up that way. I don't want to put the, I don't want to do the purge already for next week. Um, so, I, I know this is three easy opponents. We understand that. I have the zone on right now, and that's what they were saying. They, <laughs> you always get the sophisticated insights from this group, some of these guys. Uh, but listen, uh, the, the thing that struck me today was I felt this was at least the first match where you can see the imprint of De Rossi, no? I mean, cl- clearly... All the way through, yes, because the imprint was already there against Hellas Verona. Perhaps it was also a reaction, you know, uh, uh, an immediate reaction, a short-lived reaction following Mourinho's exit. But tonight was the night where Roma got together. And I think they put in the work that uh, that they showed in training, you know, considering they, they had a, a whole week to prepare for tonight. Tonight was, Correct. I think, evident that the result was the work they put in in training. I I agree. I, you can see some of the things too. I mean, tonight, um, they at least look like they had far more understanding of what to do with the ball, particularly in tight spaces. I think that was a thing where it, it, it was going to take them time and it is still going to take them time. Again, this is Cagliari. Um, however, I don't know if you noticed... Uh, the social media team of Roma, they put out these videos uh, uh, during training. And one of the things you can see is uh, that also he, he really is working on um, Roma being more quick, more concrete when they are in possession of the ball. Again, particularly in tight spaces, you can see them doing these drills in uh, a very compact area, trying to get them to be more comfortable, uh, making quick decisions, seeing where a pass may be before they receive the ball. Uh, and tonight is one of the first times that I, I said to myself, they are at the least capable of playing this way. It is still going to take a lot of time. It is still not going to uh, uh, immediately remove all of the things they did under Jose Mourinho. And there are some good things that they should still do that they did under Jose Mourinho. But this was the first match, again, as you said, from start to finish, where I, I think you could clearly see them trying to adopt the ways of football that Daniele Terossi is trying to get them to do. 
after three matches, it's hard again to really ga- <laughs> to really gauge what the impact is of Daniele De Rossi. But I would say, uh, more than tactically or technically anything like that, the thing I said in my post-match uh, podcast again was beyond the actual, okay, we're playing four in the fence now, there is clearly a change in attitude, no? Uh, uh, just the application, uh, the, the level of motivation, the level of, uh, I would say, commitment to the play, to the match, uh, it just looks different. And to me, that says that clearly a change was needed. It doesn't mean you have to hate Jose Mourinho. It doesn't mean Jose Mourinho was wrong. The thing I said was sometimes the recipe gets stale and we have to try a new ingredient and that happens in football. So be it. Doesn't mean somebody is profoundly wrong. So it just sometimes you need to change. And when I sit, the thing with cars, though, I don't want to say it bothers me because I like I, I like him. I like his agents. Um, seeing him run about like that, it, it, it struck me. It, it, it's this guy. Uh, this guy was going from not playing at all. We remember that weird thing Mourinho was doing with with the right backs, it seemed like he was just uh, taking a coin, tossing it in the air, and then seeing who he felt like playing yeah. that particular uh, evening. Yeah. A- 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 and now I see Karsdorp out there. He he is making runs. I mean, uh, Bove, he had, that all, he, he had the offside. He should have had the goal. Uh, barely offside. Um, but I see him making these passes, such as that one, and I see him running uh, nonstop in the 85th minute still. And I think to myself, he was not doing this in the final period of Jose Mourinho. So so when I see things yeah. like that, it's clear to me that something had to change and a change had to be made on the bench. So beyond that, it's difficult for me to see the impact. I'm sure in time we will see more of a technical and a tactical. That's the whole, po- that's the whole point, right, of bringing in a new manager, right? Correct. Correct. When you manager, the, the idea is very rarely is the idea, oh, let's get them all back to playing football again no it's let's let's get them back to having a reaction it's it's about the basics because very often when you have to change a coach it's mid-season especially it's because you're desperate so when you're desperate you're right. not even looking for you know a a, a a concrete game plan that you can apply time and time you know you're just looking to keep the group alive to keep the team afloat that's what you're doing so it doesn't matter if you're Beppe Iacchini or if you're Pep Guardiola. If you come in mid-season, all you're looking is to get the guys back and running again. And in order to do that, they need to buy into what you are selling them. Um, that is why I thought appointing Daniel Ederos in this situation, it could be a huge risk for him because, hey, he's young, inexperienced. But at the same time, if you're looking for a guy who knows what it means to go through ups and downs in this environment, in this city, with this team, that's the guy. He went through countless situations where uh, a coach was on the line, a player was on the line, everything was on the line, a whole season was on the line. So if there is a guy who can handle this type of pressure in this type of place, it's Daniele De Rossi. And it seems like I'm not, again, I don't want to say that this is the blueprint for De Rossi's Roma because De, De Rossi's Roma could not could could perhaps not exist anymore within four months' time because, hey, his contract expires in June. So, but if, if, if he can get into the heads of these guys because these players clearly had a disconnect from the fir- very yes. first day of the season. Clearly, there was a disconnect. Some players responded well, like Eduardo Bove. Others completely, completely fell out. Um, if he can get them back on track, just doing the simple things, and the simple things is just not losing your opponent, marking properly, and getting a decent cross in, That's all it is. That's all, you know, football is, yes, it may be a science when you work on it, when you have a plan, when you have a long-term plan ahead. But if you're Daniele De Rossi and you're looking to get Roma uh, back into the Champions League and at least keep them 
energized that's all you need it's the basics and the basics must be done well tonight was all about the basics showing that it doesn't need to be complicated um and even against uh, an opponent that okay was desperate for points but clearly an opponent that will give you problems just because of how uh how defensive minded they are and uh yes that that was that's the difficulty that we faced against Salernitana and tonight it, it, we we basically went through them like a like a hot knife on butter so it was it was perfect it really was perfect and again it, it, it's easy to be cynical and look at who they've played and say okay well again Sister calls me would would run riot over these guys but i, I just I look at the overall application, and even when they are uh, struggling in moments against Verona, I, there is just clearly a different, a different era about the team. They look maybe freer. I, I think I said something akin to that. They definitely, I forget which which player it was, or if it was even a player. Uh, it might have been an ex player in some interview where. They observed that Roma, they were just overthinking. Uh, they were doing too much um, analyzation of football instead of just playing uh, in the final days of Jose Mourinho. And, and that is definitely how I feel and can see the validity of that argument watching a match like tonight. I, I just, I, they're, they're reshowing the goals right now. And they, they just reshowed that the uh, offside goal of Bove that. Karsdorp makes a sensational run and a superb pass. And the guy is just running and running and running and running. And it just looks like he's playing with uh, uh, 50 less uh, uh, stone on his on his back. Like, it's astonishing to me that some of these guys are the same, uh, same group of players. And I even see Paulo Dybala, who in the first two matches under De Rossi, he, he looked a bit out of place. But then you look at him tonight, and he, I mean, he's balling. He's balling. He's absolutely balling. And that is not even to mention the fact that Romelu Lukaku at least should have had uh, two goals to his name. Uh, but he ends the night with zero. A and it's still, it's it's no no sweat whatsoever. It it's no skin off your back. I look at this tonight, and I, I just, I see a team that just looks more assured of itself, which is very odd to think because you would not say that going from Jose Mourinho to a guy who uh, was sacked in Serie B uh, one, like one year ago. It, it, it is such a weird thing to say. But as you said, football sometimes isn't. Yes, we have all of these analytics. We have all of these data points. But sometimes, man, it's just about, you know, kicking the ball forward, putting the thing into the back of the net and not letting the other team do that to you. Uh, like. I, it really does not have to be this complicated. Um, and I feel like De Rossi almost sort of brought that out of them. Because, because again, it, yes, they are playing with more possession. Yes, they are making uh, uh, quicker passes in tighter spaces. But it's not as if, he, you know, uh, he's Pep over here uh, coming up with a, a, a technical game plan. No, and having the, the simple things. The simple the things, John. It's the simple yeah. things. And that's what that's, I said it. Uh, uh, there was a magnificent video from one of those training sessions where the camera just focused on De Rossi and De Rossi was just repeating over and over, play quick, play quick. If you play quick, life will be easier because you have to understand your strengths and your limitations. But at least if you make it quick, if you don't give it too much thought, then you 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 but naturally limit the margins of error. If you If you, Leandro Paredes, learn to get the ball to your teammate without needing three, four touches, if you can keep a counterattack alive, that's how you can increase your chances of scoring. Now, that's all it is. For Roma, it's about scoring. It's about being proactive because what happened in the final days of Jose Mourinho was Roma got too complacent. And the win against Napoli, one of the last, perhaps the last remarkable moment of Jose Mourinho's tenure, was remarkable because it hinted that, hey, maybe this team is still alive, although it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't. And now we have proof that there is something there, that this is not a hopeless group of players, that you can still work on them. 
Um, obviously, it's not right when players just flat out give up on a coach. Never. Yes. But it, it sends a clear message that something's not working and you have to, you have to, you have to do something. That's why that decision came in. That's why now, even when we see these simple things done right, it almost jumps at us. It almost uh, surprises and catches us off guard. We are so uh, uh, completely unfamiliar with, with this type of simple yet effective game plan where it's don't do too much, just do enough to get us a result. In this case, the result was three points because you faced three teams that are fighting against relegation. The, the, the Obviously, the expectations will change as you face other opponents, but tonight you had to do just the simple things that will guarantee the three points. And that's what you did. And you did it so efficiently, so effectively, they almost seemed like you were having fun, which is not yes. something that can be said about too many games this season. No. no. I, again, I mean, think of the last time we watched a Roma match, particularly one where they scored four goals, where from start to finish, there was no stress and it was enjoyable. It was, I enjoyed watching this tonight. I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed not having a heart attack uh, at some point in the second half. I enjoyed watching it. And the players, again, I, I can't reiterate enough how free they looked. They looked so much more free of mind, like something was no longer weighing on them. Uh, now, as you said, we don't have to like how things went in the last stage of Jose Mourinho's time at the club. But I, I mean... There's plenty to play for now. I suppose we can worry about that at another date. And it will come out at some point, all of the crap that happened. We see some stories of uh, Jose Mourinho leaving uh, uh, his uh, uh, conference league uh, medal on the... Again, very questionable that this story comes out on match day. It couldn't right. have come out in the weekend. Had to come out on match day from one only one source. We, it, we'll just leave it at that. Um, so three easy matches. Uh, that ends now. Uh, Inter come to town next in the league. Uh, I, it's not as if we could come on here and say, oh, well, definitely. Definitely. They should go out there, and they are definitely the favorites. They should absolutely. If they play the way they did tonight, they are going to win. No questions asked. I, I, I mean, come on. Uh, this is the team at the top of the table. Without question, the best team in Serie A of this season. I mean, your early read on the game is, let's just see. I mean, that has to be it. No, nobody's going to logically say it, particularly if you watch the... I think, uh, the, it's, I, think I think everybody's thinking more or less the same is that Roma clearly are not going there in any way, shape, or form as a team that could match Inter's quality. No. But just no. with the desire to not get humiliated. That's the... Mm. That's the bottom line is don't get humiliated. Don't let them overwhelm you. Because if you let them overwhelm you, if you let an opponent humiliate you at this stage, you'll risk of losing all the confidence you've built up over these last three years. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, there is something a bit sad in having the expectation be don't get humiliated. But... And this is something that the Roma of uh, Rudy Garcia seemed renowned for, where you you would get a string of very good results and then just one, one Champions League match against Bayern and, and everything seems to go to shit. Uh, that is what I fear here. Now, I look at the first match against Inter and it was what? They scored in the 81st, 82nd minute. I, I forget the exact. But you held on at San Siro yeah. until the very end. Yes, you did. So, uh, and even then, I, I, I don't think anybody's going to argue and say that Inter didn't deserve to win that one. Because if I recall correctly, Roma... I think they ended that match with maybe one shot on goal. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was it was a flat game, but to say Inter deserved it would, it would be a stretch. It would be Roma made one more mistake than Inter. Okay, F the, the, okay, fair enough. Um, I watch. I'm I'm sure you watched the Derby d'Italia last night. I, I listen. This is a very good Inter now. Uh, 
they they defeat Juve on an own goal essentially. Um, but still, you you are essentially facing a team that has everything in place. They have a way of playing. They have this system of essentially being able to plug and play certain guys who uh, fit their way or ideas of football. I mean, look, they, they were in a Champions League final not too long ago, less than one year ago. They lose three or four of the starting 11, and, and they just, again, they, they plug in three or four new players, and nah, they don't skip a beat. Uh, I obviously understand that, that Inter, strongest team in the league, that y- you have to go into this with the absolute lowest expectation. I, I, I understand this, but... I feel like not being humiliated. Can't surely we can aim for a bit more than that? Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not expecting them to win. You are not expecting them to win. Um, I would at least like for them, instead of saying not to be humiliated, the, the thing I want to see is if they can interpret the football of Daniele Terossi as they did tonight. Now, obviously, not at the same level of success, but can they still carry over what? That all he asks of them against a vastly superior opponent. Can that happen? Because for can, me, can that you, is no, where we can, are going can to see. You, can you stay true to yourself regardless mm. of the context? You know, because obviously the game will differ. You will not play the same way against Inter as you play against Cagliari. You will not take the same chances, the same risks against Inter as you do against Cagliari. So that is different. But what you want to maintain is the attitude, the pursuit of the three points. That's and and that dictates whether you are hiding, whether you are again, you know, running out and uh, and and trying to find some excuses and and going back to the the, the old version of Roma that we saw up until a month ago, or if you want to continue what De Rossi is trying to to get you to do. One hundred percent. Okay, we will leave it there. We will return later in the week uh, in the build-up to the match against Inter. Until then, ciao.